In a dusty, quiet village in Malawi, something unimaginable happened. An 18-year-old school dropout, armed with little more than curiosity, scrap materials, and ancestral genius, accomplished what most modern scientists still scratch their heads over and dismissed to be impossible. He created a device that generates electricity from thin air. Let that sink in. Not from wind, not from solar, not from hydro, from the very air we breathe. I will sharing a clip of this even before the end of this video. However, let's unpack the this uncanny technology coal that have striking resemblance of Maxwell Chikumbutso self-powered technology. Now pause and think. If what this teenager from Malawi claims is real, and from all eyewitness accounts, it is, then the world as we know it is about to change forever. This isn't just another invention. This is a thunderbolt to the chest of every lie we've been taught about who holds the key to innovation and human progress. Since colonial times, African students have been fed a steady diet of educational colonization. History books filled with Western great men, Edison, Tesla, Einstein, Newton, as if the rest of the world simply watched. Our classrooms became echo chambers of Eurocentric supremacy, whispering the same message. The West invents, Africa consumes. But in 2025, the spell broke. Ernest Andrew, a name that might sound more British than Maloyan, emerged from the heart of Africa with a reality-shattering invention, a system that extracts electricity from the air and powers multiple homes in a remote village, all without formal training, labs, or funding. And here's the kicker. It works. Not in theory, not in concept, but right now, on the ground, in real homes. He has successfully lit up nine households in his village with stable, clean electricity. People charge phones. They use electric shavers. Light bulbs glow. All without solar panels, fuel, or batteries. Ernest dropped out of school in 2018, not because he lacked intelligence, but because he lacked school fees. While others saw a failure, the ancestors may have seen a vessel. Ernest became obsessed with solving the problem of power in his village. After realizing that we were facing a lot of problems without electricity, I thought of trying to make it. Now here we are. Ernest said, standing beside his handmade transformer. His generator, cobbled together from scraps and magnets, reportedly outputs 1,000 volts of electricity. According to Ernest, he uses air and stores power in bottles. A baffling explanation that has left experts both confused and, honestly, pretty intrigued. Many are comparing his work to knowledge lost in time. Remnants of ancient advanced civilizations, sometimes referred to in fringe circles as Tartarian. These were societies rumored to have built devices that pulled energy directly from the atmosphere, using free energy principles lost after cataclysms or, uh, maybe even deliberate suppression. It may sound like fantasy, but what else can explain how an unschooled teen can defy the known rules of physics and power homes with no external energy input? It's not just electricity, it's a revolution, it's a rewriting of what's possible. Ernest Andrews' invention disrupts more than just scientific theories. It threatens entire industries, oil, energy, mining, telecoms. The Western scientific establishment is stunned, not just because of what he has done, but because of who he is. Here's the bitter truth. If this had come from a lab in Silicon Valley, it would be on every front page in the world. But because it came from the dirt roads of Malawi, it is being questioned, doubted, ignored. What kind of air is he using? What is it doing? How is it converted into electricity? We don't know, and he's not explaining. And maybe that's exactly the point. Maybe Ernest is not explaining because he's protecting something, intellectual property, a divine gift, or simply a survival instinct learned from watching how many African inventions are stolen or silenced. Despite criticism from experts, Ernest's neighbors know the truth because, well, they live it daily. I was among those who doubted him, one villager said, but when I saw light in his parents' house, I asked him to connect mine too. All right, so carefully watch this opening act video clip. It's one out of three, and I'll be back with you shortly afterwards. The inventor Ernest Andrews Innovation largely aims to save money villagers spend in buying torches and batteries 
to light their homes. After realizing that we were facing a lot of problems without using electricity, I thought of trying to make electricity. Now here we are. The 18-year-old secondary school dropout says his generator produces 1,000 volts of electricity. He has now connected nine houses from a self-made transformer. I get you on the ampere. This system generates electricity using air. To make a light bulb illuminate, I use power stored in bottles. I experiment with magnetic power to determine how much electricity I can produce. After that, I generate power based on the number of houses I want to supply. But experts complain of Andrew's failure to articulate how he is using air to generate electricity. Or they say he might be purposely concealing it to prevent others from coping. What type of air is he using? We don't know. What air is doing to produce the power? We don't know. And he's not saying. How is he taking the air into his system to produce uh, electricity? We don't know. Katumba said if he proved real, Andrew's innovation would be rated among the most extraordinary in the world. The innovation has convinced skeptical neighbors. I was among those who were doubting his ability to generate electricity, which we can use in our homes. But when I saw that he had managed to connect his parents' house, that's when I asked him to connect my house too. Now life is simple. The villagers use the free electricity to charge phones and plug in electric shaving machines. Andrew's mother, Evelyn Chinguo, says he dropped out of school in 2018 because of lack of school fees. In the meantime, Andrew is working to connect the entire village and fulfill the government's request to illuminate the nearby public primary school. Let me get this straight. You think this is the real deal? Oh, just wait until you watch the next clip. It, I'm pretty sure you're starting to question everything now. Every lie about green energy propaganda. Now, they charge their phones, shave their beards, light their homes, all from air free, clean, sustainable. And what makes this story even more powerful is that he did it for them. Not for patents, not for profit, but to lift his people from darkness, literally. Even Malawi's energy minister, Ibrahim Matola, couldn't ignore the wave Ernest created. After a public demonstration of the invention, the government stepped in with donations, electrical wires, protective gear, voltage measuring tools, and formed a team of experts to assist and verify. Of lack of school fees. I am appealing to well-wishers to assist this boy to continue with his education, like sending him back to school to improve his innovative ideas, because the knowledge he is using now is inborn. Minister of Energy Ibrahim Matola recently expressed the appreciation of the invention. Such innovations can make us achieve access to electricity. But not only access, affordability, sustainability. Authorities in the lower district donated training, electric wires, protective wear, and a gadget for measuring electricity voltage. One thing that we're going to do as a district uh, to make sure that he's, uh, whatever he's doing when he is working on uh, the appliances is safe. The Malawi government has organized a group of experts and identify areas to assist. In the meantime, Andrew is working to connect the entire village and fulfill the government's request to illuminate the nearby public primary school. Such innovations can help us achieve not just electricity access, said the minister, but also affordability and sustainability. The local government even tasked Ernest with electrifying the nearby public primary school. A poetic twist, considering he himself had to drop out of school due to poverty. This invention wasn't born in a lab. It wasn't funded by grants or guided by textbooks. It came from a place deeper than logic, from a kind of ancestral intelligence passed down not through institutions, but through spirit, intuition, and struggle. African innovation is not mere science. It is a dance between the modern and the mystical, the forgotten genius of civilizations long buried under colonial rubble. Ernest Andrew has cracked open the gates. His success tells every African child, you were never meant to just learn history.
You were born to create it. The world has a choice. It can ignore him, just like it has ignored so many African geniuses before. Or it might try to discredit him, as it always does when new truth threatens old power. But, you know it could also support him, fund him, and protect him, and finally let Africa shine. Not just as a consumer, but as a creator of global progress. We are witnessing right now the rebirth of African innovation. The true age of enlightenment isn't something in the past. It's happening right now, in huts and villages, in the minds of children once called dropouts, in the souls of the forgotten. The air we breathe now powers homes in Malawi. Honestly, that sentence alone should stop the world in its tracks. And when the story of the 21st century is finally written, and the lies of science begin to fall away, don't be surprised if the turning point began not in New York or London, but in a forgotten village in Africa with a boy named Ernest Andrew. Remember this, the future doesn't belong to those who have always had power or paid more to acquire laws of physics crafted by gatekeepers. It belongs to those who finally learned how to tap from the real energy source that is infinite, inexhaustible, without gatekeepers or energy monopolies. This is the African energy revolution emerging from the spirituality of the Moor, the Tartarian civilization. If they buried our ancestry with mud flood, they should await our digital flood as it's coming. And it doesn't need permission. It doesn't choose fancy classroom or billion dollars research labs. It chooses its own people. If there is anything that you should learn above all you have learned from Western miseducation system, here is the bunker. It's time you unlearn it. It's time you start reasoning and receiving from your intuition, then you read and lean from your textbook. Thanks for watching. Ensure to share this awakening to everyone who wants to be, be truly free. Our flame bearers must be protected at all cost. Now, if you will excuse me, gentlemen and ladies, I have a flight to catch a self-powered car to drive.